This movie is number three in a series of five that demonstrate the basic use of FME Desktop as a tool for data translation and transformation. Each movie covers the content from one chapter of the FME Desktop tutorial. This chapter covers basic methods for restructuring spatial data while it is being converted from one format to another. Transforming data in FME is a way to progress beyond quick translation and produce data in a structure that can be used seamlessly by the end user. Data transformation is the ability to manipulate data during format translation, to create, delete, or modify the spatial information. Transformation can be carried out on the structure of the data, i.e. the data is being restructured, or the content of the data. This chapter covers the transformation of data structures. Common structural transformations are adding or removing attributes, changing attribute names or types, and merging or dividing different layers of data. There are two examples in this movie. The first shows how to carry out transformation using techniques called schema editing and schema mapping. The second example shows how to carry out transformation using FME workbench tools called transformers. The scenario for this example is an FME user in a planning department of a city working with a data set containing city parks. This person has been tasked with creating data suitable for analysis for grounds maintenance. By this we mean the end user wants to know the area of grass to cut in each park and the length of stream bank to be maintained. This particular example demonstrates simple data restructuring as the first step in this project. Here I've already started FME. This example continues to develop the workspace in the format translation chapter. Because I've worked in it already, I can open it from the list of previous workspaces on the start screen. Notice that the workspace is a very simple translation from MapInfo tab to GML, and that no edits have taken place. The first task is to rename some of the attributes to be written in the output GML, as the existing names are not very descriptive. You can rename an attribute by right-clicking and choosing the option to rename. This opens a small text box in which to edit the name. I can simply change the name to park name, and I can easily repeat the process to, name, to change name alt to alt park name. The process of renaming is called schema editing. Remember, schema is the word we use for, for FME for a data model. Another schema editing task is to add new attributes to a writer schema. Besides the canvas, I can edit attributes in this feature type properties dialog, specifically on this tab marked user attributes. It's a simple process to add a new attribute such as park size and set the attribute to a real number. And now I'll add another one called stream edge. Remember the area of each park and stream are important bits of information for the end user. Looking at the canvas I can see the two new attributes have been added to the schema. At the moment their input ports are colored red because they are receiving no input. In this case it's not a concern yet because the setup process isn't complete. Another schema editing task is to set up the correct layers or feature types for the output data. In this example we have been asked to split golf courses into a separate layer because golf courses have special maintenance costs and should be treated as a special case. The simplest method of creating a new feature type is to duplicate an existing one. Now I have two output layers which should really rename them to properly differentiate the contents. First, I right-click the feature type and choose the rename option to change the name. This one I'll rename to Golf Courses. I could do the renaming by pressing the F2 key instead. I now have two differently named feature types and have completed the schema editing. However, the Golf Courses is unconnected. To make a new connection, I simply click on the arrow port and drag a connection to the other port release. I must also reconnect the required attributes. The process of connecting objects this way is called schema mapping. Besides schema editing and schema mapping, transformation can also be carried out using objects in FME Workbench called transformers. Transformation occurs as the data is passed from reader to writer through a series of these transformers. A workspace containing transformers looks like this. Each of the blue objects in this workspace is a different transformer. There are approximately 400 different transformers available so the potential uses are very large. Each transformer in FME is a parameters button on the top right. This button controls parameters for the transformer and appears in different colors to denote different statuses. Many transformers have mandatory parameters that must be set. Luckily most of these contain default values. 
A yellow parameters button indicates the transformer is using default values for any of these mandatory fields. The workspace will run, but it's recommended you confirm the default values are correct before starting the translation. When the parameters button is red and shows an exclamation point, it means the one or more mandatory fields do not have defaults. In this case, a user value must be set before the translation can be run. A parameters button whose color matches the transformer, usually light blue, indicates that all parameter values have already been checked and accepted. The second example in this chapter continues to work towards creating data suitable for grounds maintenance. The previous example demonstrated data restructuring using schema editing and mapping. This example shows how to restructure data using transformers. At the moment the workspace is duplicating data due to the connections from the reader to two different feature types. Therefore the first task involves filtering out data into one feature type or another. This can be done using a tester transformer. A transformer can be replaced by typing its name into the canvas. The list of matches gets shorter and eventually the required transformer, a tester, can be selected. Now the transformer must be connected into position. As I drag it a pink dot appears. I can put the transformer into the correct connection by highlighting that connection and releasing the mouse. Because there's more than one output port, an extra dialog appears prompting the user to select a port to connect. Eventually, I'll test for the presence of the word golf. Features with that word need to go to golf courses, so I choose tester passed. Notice that the transformer is now in position, and a connection can be made from the failed port to the parks. Now I have the scenario where it feature is either a golf course or not, and is written to a different layer accordingly. I must now delete this connection to avoid getting duplicate data. Because overlapping connections aren't encouraged, I'll also swap the positions of these two feature types and untangle the links. Now I can remap the attributes onto the feature types. Now the tester has a red icon reminding me to set up the test parameters for this transformer. I do this by clicking the icon itself. To create the test, the first check is where the alternate name contains the word golf. So the operator is contains and the right value contains golf. Now the test is set up and I can click OK to close the dialog. Now let's run the workspace and see what the output is. First I'll save it. Next I'll set the output to go directly to the inspection application. This is a sort of preview to view the output without writing a data set. Now when I run the workspace it will automatically open up the FME Universal Viewer. The viewer shows there are two feature types in this data set, one for parks and one for golf courses. I can see what data is in each layer by turning the layers on and off. I can also query this feature to prove that it is a golf course. There's no values for park size and stream edge which is why they don't appear in the window. This will be dealt with in the next chapter of the tutorial. Remember, if you do need any technical assistance while using FME, the best starting point is fmepedia.safe.com. From here you can navigate to downloads, examples and documentation, plus also get in touch with the Safe Software support team. That concludes this movie on structural transformation with FME. The next section in the FME desktop tutorial is content transformation. On behalf of everyone at Safe Software, thank you for taking the time to view this FME desktop training presentation. We hope it was useful for you. If you have further questions, please do not hesitate to contact Safe Software at any of the addresses below, or look for further technical information at fmepedia.safe.com. Thank you.